Chapters 47 through 49 consist of a series of reflections on and debates about creative writing. For example, whether or not plays should be censored, whether or not readers' tastes can justify the existence of certain books, and whether the romances of chivalry contain truths capable of teaching us something or are merely filled with lunacies and lies that damage their readers. The theoretical discussions are interesting in their own right, and we see clearly that Cervantes studied the history of the novel form from antiquity to the 17th century. Two big other issues also appear. First, religion. The priest and a certain canon of Toledo dominate the discussion and often refer to scripture. And second, magic or enchantment. The squire insists that his master has been tricked, whereas Don Quixote continues to deny this. The most subtle aspect of these chapters, however, is the discussion of literary precepts, including a wild proposal for censorship. Furthermore, these chapters seem to contain a philosophical meditation on a range of metaphysical beliefs. Finally, remember that this is the last instance of meta-commentary on the possible global significance of the novel just prior to its finale. As the inn's guests exchange goodbyes, Don Quixote notes that there is something new and particularly modern about the form of his enchantment. Perhaps the chivalry and spells of our own times are destined to follow another path than those of the ancients. Sancho approaches Don Quixote's cage and asserts that these apparitions that walk about here are not entirely Catholic. Sancho speaks figuratively. He means that things aren't kosher. Something strange is afoot, but Don Quixote takes him literally, and his reaction suggests broader religious and metaphysical issues, even the urge to empirically test reality. Catholic? My father. How can they be Catholic if they are all devils that have taken illusory bodies in order to come do this and put me in this state? And if you want to see the truth of this, touch them and palpate them, and you will see that their bodies are but air and that they consist of nothing but appearances. But Sancho, always earthbound, has already investigated and reports that one is plump with flesh and also smells of amber half a league away. Don Fernando has perfumed himself. Don Quixote admits that demons bring hell with them wherever they go, but then he insists that Sancho's sense of smell has been deceived by diabolical powers. It's hard to reason with a man whose metaphysical fantasy provides an explanation for everything. Meanwhile, the priest had arranged with the officers of the Holy Brotherhood to accompany him to his village, offering them a daily sum. Cardenio hangs the leather shield or buckler and the basin on Rocinante's saddle and by signs ordered Sancho to mount his ass and take Rocinante's reins. When the innkeeper's wife, her daughter, and Maritornes pretend to mourn, Don Quixote responds with another harangue about the difficult lives of valiant knights errant, saying that they always incur the envy of so many princes by their virtue and courage. Note the allusion to the ideas of Machiavelli here, who made particular use of the term virtue when discussing the modern art of being a prince. Note also that at the end of his speech, Don Quixote transforms into a gentleman. Forgive me, fair ladies, if my carelessness hath caused you any offense, which willingly and knowingly I have never done to anyone, and pray to God that he deliver me from this captivity to which some malicious enchanter hath consigned me. Finally, we should note that the cage in which Don Quixote travels was typically used at that time to transport prisoners or madmen, so the scene is particularly pathetic. Next, everyone bids farewell with tears and hugs. In a significant gesture, the innkeeper gives the priest all the papers he found in the lost suitcase, for its owner had not since returned there. These include the novel of the curious impertinent, as well as a new text, the novel of Rinconete and Cortadillo, a picaresque that Cervantes himself would publish among his 12 exemplary novels in 1613. Our author then gives us another autobiographical and a generic wink as Don Quixote's entourage leaves the inn.